Hello, welcome to episode 7. In this particular episode, we are going to look at the point group symmetries of a three-dimensional figure known as the tetrahedron. This is the point group TD, so we'll look at the uh, features of the point group TD and some of its chemically important subgroups. This figure here is the tetrahedron. Tetra means four, hedron means faces. So it's a figure that has four trigonal faces. You may have had a friend who was two-faced. Well, this is the molecule. It's like, so it has four faces. is the equivalent of having two such friends all in one molecule. So uh, this has 24 different symmetry operations, so it has a lot of them. The first symmetry operations that we want to look at are the mirror planes. So if we take another tetrahedron here, we can look at it, and we see that written onto the pattern is we have a line which goes along here, and this particular line is the mirror plane. So the mirror plane goes through here along perpendicular to the front face of the tetrahedron, and we can see this in three dimensions if we turn it around this way. That Again, we have a tetrahedron, and we see that the mirror plane goes through this the middle of this face, but then along one of the edges. And we can see that this is true. If we open up our figure, and we can see that the left side looks exactly like the right side. The left side is the mirror image of the right side. So we can kind of see this from several different, different angles. This helps us to visualize more clearly where the mirror plane is for the tetrahedron. We can see it with another example. So here we have a green tetrahedron. So looking at it. Again, we have printed on the one side. We can see the line in the center of one of the trigonal faces. And this is the mirror plane along here. So if we turn around this way, we know that the other end has to go through the edge. We can kind of start sawing through it. Got to cut through our uh, tetrahedron along the mirror plane. And we see that once we do that, if we open it up, that the left side is much like the right side. So we can see it. So from this angle, we can see it from above, and we can see what it looks like from below. Except in the two halves. There we go. So that gives us the mirror planes, which are all vertical for the tetrahedron. So now let's look at some of the high order rotation axes. Uh, one of the important symmetries of the tetrahedron is a threefold symmetry. So let's line up a three sided face along the tetrahedron. And what we've done is we've actually put green dots to represent atoms. Perhaps these might be the hydrogen atoms of methane. So as we, we can test our C3 axis, if we rotate a third of a turn in the counterclockwise direction. We see that if we do that, the atoms line up perfectly. We also see that if we rotate a third of a turn clockwise, we have the C3 minus 1 operation. So uh, by this kind of a uh, mechanism, we can demonstrate the C3 axis of a tetrahedron. Now there are also other rotational axes, which are a little more difficult to see for the tetrahedron. One example is we have a two-fold axis. So here we have our tetrahedron, pink, and the axle that's going through it is along the two-fold axis. So we actually have a C2. And one way to demonstrate that is if we point this up at the camera, this is the axis. So we started out with this particular edge here being horizontal. So you can see that. And now if we rotate 120 degrees around that particular axis, we see that we get back exactly where we started from. So it really does have a C2 axis. This is one of the ones that students have great difficulty in seeing because the uh, rotational axis doesn't go along any of the uh, expected uh, directions that we might expect. So it actually goes through uh, the central atom. So if we assume this is a molecule such as methane the C2 axis would go through the carbon atom and it will go between a pair of hydrogens on this side and also 
between the pair of hydrogens on this side. So the C2 axis only goes through one of the five atoms of the molecule. So you can see that there. Now, there's a much, much more complicated rotational axis. And to help us see this, we, I've made a tetrahedron where I've cut out the centers of each face so that it's more easy to see through the figure. So we can actually get a, a more three-dimensional appreciation. And we can also see inside and through the tetrahedron. So again, this one is set up along exactly the same way as the C2 axis was. So again, it goes through the central atom, and then between the two hydrogen atoms on this side, and between the two hydrogen atoms on the other side. So let's set it up this way. Now, one of the things we want to keep in mind is that the front edge in front of us is horizontal. And then if we look in, in the back, we notice that there is a connecting the, the, the last two atoms of the molecule is, is vertical. So then we want to see what happens if you have a, a uh, we call an improper rotation. So an improper rotation consists, it's kind of a hybrid operation, in that it consists of two different operations done consecutively. The first of the operations is a rotation. So we're looking for S4. So the first step of S4 is a C4 operation. So the C4 operation will rotate like this. There we go. Now, one of the differences, once we've done that, what we see has happened is that the front connection, this bond here, is now vertical, and the bond connecting the other two atoms in the back is now horizontal. So they've switched positions. Originally, the front was horizontal, and the back was vertical. So after doing a C4 operation, we've switched those. Now, to get them back, we mirror through the center of the atom. So this particular mirror plane would be perpendicular to our uh, S4 axis here. So once we do that, we flip it around, and we get this. So, so now we're back to having a, uh, well, this, I'm sorry, just like this. Now we have a horizontal one in front and vertical one back, which is exactly how we had started. So this is the improper rotation. This is the most risque of all the symmetry operations, since it is improper. It is often the most difficult to visualize because it's a hybrid operation. And so an S4 consists of a C4 operation followed by a mirror plane. So we see this uh, combination of a central piece that's horizontal, a vertical one in the back. Um, the only way we are able to connect them by a symmetry operation is by two steps. The first is to rotate by a C4, and then the second one is to uh, mirror through the center, and then we get back the way we had started before. So uh, we can be able to see the um, C4 operation a little more easily in by this type of a, a setup, so long as we have the axis going through the molecule and we also have the advantage that we can see through the tetrahedron. So it makes it easier to distinguish which bonds are in front of the plane, which ones are behind, which ones are vertical, and which ones are horizontal. <laughs> now, one thing which is important is think about why do we care about the point group TD at all? Well, it turns out in 1874, Jacobus Van Hoff and Joseph Lebel independently were able to determine the structure of carbon and such compounds as methane. And they were able to determine that carbon has a tetrahedral arrangement when it is making four bonds, as it does in methane. We would recognize later on that carbon in these particular cases will exhibit sp3 hybridization. It's a quite fascinating thing to tell students that Vantoff was and Labelle were able to determine the structure of carbon as being tetrahedral in 1874 without the benefit of computers or x-ray crystallography. So it's a great achievement. In organic chemistry, this type of arrangement of carbon is the most common motif. So it's of fundamental importance in organic chemistry. 
in inorganic chemistry. This is the second most common arrangement of ligands. The most common arrangement is the octahedral arrangement, and the tetrahedral arrangement is the second most common.